I hope that you're doing amazing wherever you are in the world. My name is Boom Shaka and I welcome you to my channel. I'm so grateful that you're listening, subscribing and commenting. I do appreciate the support. And if you're interested in supporting me further, you can do that by going to my Ko-fi or Patreon link there in the description below. In this one, I want to speak to you about energy and how a lot of times INFJs in situations where they're being social or when they're around individuals other than really close friends, they might come across as apathetic. They might come across as low energy individuals. They might come across as people who, who are just passionless, uh, aloof, cold, um, just not really enthusiastic, powerful, passionate people, right? Completely the opposite of it, actually. We come across as, as just dull, right? That, that's a really good word for it. And, and a lot of people actually, when I, when I do hang out with, inter- with people who are, I'm really not interested in or who are not interesting to me or people who are just not my tribe, a lot of times they will say this to me, you know, you, you're a very dull person, aren't you? Or you're very, very cold or aloof or you're not very enthusiastic. You don't have a lot of energy, do you? And it's really fascinating to me because that instantaneously tells me that I'm not in a situation that's conducive to me, to my authentic self, to who I really want to be, who I want to portray myself as. Because what happens is that our true self as INFJs is exuberant, is passionate, is intense, has a lot of energy. We can basically change the world if we have the energy for it, sorry, if we have the interest for it. But that interest is what holds us back because when we're not interested in something, we are the dullest people around, right? If we are in a job that we are not interested in, everyone around us is going to think that we don't care about the job, which is true. But also they won't realize that we can actually be a very passionate person. We are actually a very enthusiastic, energetic individual, but only if we care about the stuff that we're doing, only if we're interested in the things that we're doing, only if we're interested in the people that are around us, only if we are in a situation that brings out our authentic self. So as I said, our authentic self as an INFJ is a very enthusiastic, exuberant individual filled with passion, filled with intensity, so much so that we scare the people around us. But if we are not in a situation that that brings out this authentic self, basically in a situation that doesn't appeal to us, doesn't interest us, that's not conducive to us being our real self, then we become dull, we become boring, we become lazy, we become we become like couch potatoes. We don't do anything. We don't care about anything. We don't reply to questions that are asked of us. We just become like a sack of potatoes, really completely uninteresting. And so this is a very good clue for an INFJ if you're watching to realize if you are in a situation where you where it's conducive to you being authentic and real and your true self or not. Because how are you behaving with that person or that situation? How are you behaving in that job or in that school? How are you behaving in that particular, whatever that situation is, whatever that dimension you're in, what is your authentic self doing in that moment? And so as soon as you're able to realize, ah, I see, so I'm not really being authentic, I'm not being enthusiastic, I actually am being particularly dull, it means that you are not in a situation that's conducive to you being real, right? Now I'm not saying this happens, this is like, I would say this is very true 100% of the time, but there is one caveat to this, which is energy levels might be low because you have been going all day long. And so sometimes, you know, I've had a really long day where I've had like three meetings already with three different individuals. I've been roaming around, had breakfast with breakfast with someone and then lunch with someone else and then dinner with someone else. And then I went to a yoga class. By the time I get to the end of the day, I literally am like a sack of potatoes. But not because I'm not enthusiastic about life or about um, passionate about things going on in my life. I'm really excited about them. But I've just gone beyond the battery that I had charged myself with, right? So my battery is very low. And so in that situation, it's not a true self or an authentic self situation. It's just that your battery is low, right? So there's two situations in general you have to be careful about. Are you going into situations with your battery low or is it that the situation is not conducive to you being your authentic self, right? If your battery is high, if you just woke up and you slept really well and you've been eating well and taking care of yourself and your energy level is high, but then you go into a situation and you're like, oh, I feel so low all of a sudden 
or I feel like I'm, I'm completely drained all of a sudden, that's an indication to you that this situation is not really conducive to you being your authentic self. Now, I notice, I notice this a lot with certain people that I hang out with. Now, why do I hang out with them? It's because they're friends of friends and they usually come into the group settings that I go into. And so I will be, I'm really good friends with this one person and then she has a friend that I don't jive with at all. She drains me, the other friend that I'm talking about, the friend of a friend. And so I'll go into this dinner with my friend. I'm really excited, enthusiastic, and all of a sudden she'll be like, oh, I invited this other person as well. And instantaneously I can feel my energy draining just by the thought of her coming in. And as soon as she does come in and she starts talking, I feel even more dull. I feel even more low energy. I feel even more like, oh my God, I feel so drained. And then usually half an hour, 45 minutes later, I'll leave just because I want polite. And that's how I know that this person is not conducive to me being their, my authentic self. It's just because there's something about them. Now I can explain it to myself. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. Sometimes I'm like, why does this person irk me? Sometimes I'll try to think about why does the situation really not help me? Why does it make me feel like this? But lo loads of times I'll be like, all right, this is the way it is. This person doesn't jive with me. I don't jive with them. I need to get away from it. I don't actually try to even explain it anymore. I'm like, all right, this is the way it is. And I'm going to deal with it by running away or walking away, however you want to say it. Now, if you're an INFJ listening to this, obviously the solution is very clear to you, I'm sure that if there are situations like this in your life, try to go into them as little as possible. You know, if, you are, if there are people like this in your life, try to meet them as little as possible. And so that you are able to be your authentic self as much as possible. That is the most important thing to an INFJ is to be their authentic self. In fact, I would say to be a healthy INFJ and to really make an impact on the planet or in the world in the way that we want to, and INFJ really needs to spend as much time as possible being their authentic self. It is one of the most important criteria for an INFJ in order to be their full self. Spend time being your authentic self. Mm -hmm. And so I really want you to, I want you guys to remember this because it's important. It's important for your development. It's important for the impact that you want to create on the world. And if you're an, a non-INFJ dating an INFJ and you notice that they become dull around certain people, uh, normally they're really exuberant around you, you know, you're, they're happy around you and enthusiastic and intense and you're like, all right, calm down. And all of a sudden someone comes in or something happens and they become dull. It's an indication to you that this person, this individual or situation or whatever it might be is not conducive to your INFJ. And it is also your responsibility to make sure that you keep them away from that situation or person as much as possible. Because what happens in that situation, as I said for myself as well, I like my friend and she likes this other person. So I bear this other person for their sake, for my friend's sake. And if you are a person dating an INFJ, they will want you to be happy. And if you really like this person who drains them, they will hang out with them because they want to make you happy, right? And so if you understand that, if you want your INFJ to be healthy and to be high energy and not to become dull and boring, then you need to be careful about the things, the people, the situations you bring into their life. And it seems like a lot of work perhaps, but it is it does pay off because in the, in the end, your INFJ is going to be healthier for it, which means they're going to be more enthusiastic and exuberant around you. They're, you're going to have amazing conversations with them. They're going to have more intensity and be able to make more of an impact on the world. And the better, the healthier your INFJ is, the better your relationship is going to be with them, the healthier, longer lasting relationship you're going to have with them. And so it's conducive not only to their energy and to their health, but also to the health of your relationship with them. All right. So I do recommend that you take care of that. If you have any questions about this as an INFJ or a non-INFJ, please do ask me and I'll do a follow-up video on this. Again, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate the support and I shall see you guys next time around. Bye for now.